Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's wonderful to be with you. I bring you greetings from your brothers and sisters in Western North Carolina. And no doubt some of you will come see us in the middle of the summer to escape the Florida heat. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Mark and Cynthia for their uh, warm welcome. It's been a pleasure to, to uh, be in your diocese. Um, and uh, because we uh, worship one Lord, we proclaim one faith, we're made Christians by one baptism, we're part of one body. Uh, I bring you greetings uh, from all your brothers and sisters from uh, the Episcopal Church. So much of our work we have in common. I was astonished to see Pierre Bruno uh, when I was a priest in Athens, Georgia. Uh, many people in my congregation were active in his ministry. We have folks in Western North Carolina that are very involved in uh, Little Roses. Uh, we also share many of your outreach concerns in, in our part of the world, but most of all, we're connected because we all serve one Lord. I want to start with a quote from the great preacher William Sloan Coffin. The world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. The truth is we live in a culture of devices talked about the struggle we all have. And what I want to tell you, this is not because we're Episcopalians or Anglicans. This is the sea in which we swim. So if you want to document this, there's a man named Bill Bishop, who's not a bishop, but he is an Episcopalian, lives in Austin, Texas. He wrote a book called The Big Sort. Bill Bishop is a statistician and he has documented a movement that's been going on in America in every state in the Union. And what he says is that Americans are sorting themselves into smaller and smaller and smaller boxes. He documents that we're moving into neighborhoods where we live next to people who vote for the same people, who shop at the same stores, who drive the same cars, who read the same books, who watch the same movies, whose kids go to the same schools. In an age of diversity, we are becoming less diverse in terms of our actual connections with people. Now, the sort of good news, bad news is that we have accelerated this process of division, but it's not new. Paul is writing to this early church, these young Christians in Corinth, and he's telling them, you need to act like Christ lovers. Because he's heard about divisions in the church. He's heard about members arguing over spiritual gifts. He's heard that they even are suing each other in secular courts. And Paul tells them, you are looking at one another through the wrong lens. You need to stop seeing one another through the lens of the world, which is you are what you own, you are what you do, you are what people say about you. What he says is you need to see as followers of Jesus Christ one another through the lens of love. Remember where we started. The world is too small for anything but love. I have a confession. I had a safe, sanitized, Episcopal sermon to give you this morning. <laughs> and I assume that you would all like me and shake my hand and say nice things after I gave it. But I had lunch with a friend of mine on Thursday and dry, uh, flying down on the plane, I had to rewrite the sermon because I knew I just couldn't preach that. Invite me back and I'll give you the safe, sanitized sermon. <laughs> because I had left out the most important thing about being a follower of Jesus Christ. The way we get to seeing one another through the lens of love 
is the cross. Is the cross. So on Thursday, I had friend with, uh, lunch with my friend named Blair. Blair and I are the same age. We're both 65. You can tell me I look younger than that as, as you walk out. <laughs> Blair's just retired, and he's been looking forward to a life of retirement. Been looking forward to playing golf. He's already written one book. He's intending to write another book. Looking forward to being with his family, with his friends. He started getting a shortness of breath. He started getting tired. He couldn't walk around the golf course anymore. So he went to Baptist Hospital in Winston-Salem, and he was told he had ALS. That's the reaction I had. And Blair said to me, it's okay. It's okay. I love my wife. I love my son. I love my friends. And I know that that love lasts forever. I know that that love lasts forever. He said, there's a lot that I can't do right now, but I know what's worth doing. And I'm going to focus on that. My brothers and sisters, the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. As followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are called to help to proclaim to a world that is addicted to distraction and division. It's time to remember what matters and what doesn't matter. Our lives is so short, we don't have time to spend anything else but focusing on love. When you discover that, when you discover something has happened to you or the people you love like ALS, you don't care who wins the Iowa caucuses. You don't care who wins the Super Bowl. You don't care how much money you make. You don't care whether you're a liberal or a conservative, whether you recycle or you don't recycle. All that matters is that love. And that love transcends space and transcends time, which is why we are here. Because the truth is, when we are honest, we know that everything else gets taken away sooner or later. As Paul says, prophecies, tongues, knowledge, all of those come to an end. We could add politics, sports, iPhones, money, titles, mosquitoes, or arguments with the Anglican communion. They all come to an end. And the only thing that's left is the love of Jesus Christ, which never ends. Love is our window into eternity. Love is the doorway into communion. Love is the only way we have to hold hands with what has been and what will be. And that's why we must be here today. We're not here to recite any correct answers of why we are saved and the other people aren't saved. God knows we're not here to convince God that we're so wonderful that God ought to love us. We are here to taste the bread of heaven. We are here to drink the cup of salvation so that we remember that love is literally inside of us. It is cellular. Eat this for the remembrance of me so we don't go into the world and forget it. We have it in us. I get so frustrated with our church because we think so often our job is to be in the answering all questions business. We are not here to be a Siri for the universe. We are here to be in the loving God in Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit business. I wear this purple shirt and it's just a magnet for people. 
Because they come up to me and they ask me, where does the church stand on fill in the blank? And most of the time I say, well, we probably stand everywhere. But what I need to say is, we stand in the love of Jesus Christ. That's where we stand. That's the only place to stand. And then when you stand that place, you are empowered to live a faithful life and to be a conduit for that love so that you can bring people home. You can help people come to their senses and remember who they are and why they're here. That love is the deep love where you can hold hands with everyone. And then you discover that center where, as Paul says, there is no slave nor free, no male nor female. I have all kinds of degrees. I remember when I decided to go to seminary, my mother said, won't it be nice you have another diploma for your wall? (laughs) But the truth is, this love is not something you can get from your intellect or your accomplishments. This love is simply a gift that is freely given that you can only receive. Now, let me be clear. It's not that we don't engage the issues of the day. Of course we do. But these are not our core identity. These are things that come from our core identity. And these are our love of Jesus Christ enables them to engage the issues of the day in a way that is gracious, that doesn't draw lines, that calls everyone to come to the center because we know finally that's where we can all meet. Walker Percy, the wonderful novelist, once said, why is it that Carl Sagan is so wise about the universe and such a jerk to his neighbors? I do not want that to be what they say about the Episcopal Church. The heart of our faith is our heart. The world is too small for anything but love. This is, in my mind, Christianity 101, but it's a remedial class that we always need to take because we forget. We want to turn Jesus into some kind of rule giver, but Jesus is the divine lover who is willing to go up to the cross and die for us in order that we discover the way to new life. And that love never dies, so we all know that. My father died over 20 years ago. He uh, was the manager of a sweater company in Asheville, North Carolina. So when I was growing up, there was like a 100% chance that I was going to get a sweater for Christmas. (laughs) So uh, at Thanksgiving, we'd make out our Christmas list after we stuffed ourselves. And as a kid, I sort of learned how this was going to work. So the first thing I put on my list was a new sweater, you know. And then I'd put a football, a giraffe, a lion, and all this other stuff, you know. Well, when my father died, my uh, sister and brother and I uh, went and he had this huge uh, uh, chest that had all his sweaters in it. And he, he had, I don't know, 50, 70 sweaters. So we divided them up. And if you grew up in the 60s, um, these were mohair sweaters, alpaca sweaters, lamb's wool sweaters, cashmere sweaters, just all kinds of sweaters. So I probably had 25 or 30 sweaters. And I put them in a box and put them in uh, the closet and sort of forgot about them. But maybe a year, maybe a year and a half later, I pull this box out and I started pulling these sweaters out. And I started to rub them on my face. And I started to smell them. And suddenly my father was there. Suddenly it was as if time was like that. If the love that we have for one another is that strong, how much more is the love that God has for us. 
The good news that we need to proclaim to the world is the love of Jesus Christ is strong enough to heal all our divisions, to bring us into a communion with one another, to bind us together so that as a people we can proclaim one Lord, one faith, one body of Christ, one God and Father of us all. So my brothers and sisters, let us remember the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. Amen. Amen.